Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you're here. So I got really good feedback last week on my reverse color along format. So I thought I'd go ahead and knock another one out for you um, to see what you think. So today we're going to be coloring this page from Maria Trolley's Botanica. So meet me on the other side and we'll get started. Before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you so very much for the very warm response to my video last time where I presented the idea or the concept for the reverse color along for the first time. Um, as I said at that time, it was an experiment on my part. I wasn't sure if there'd be an appetite for a format like this with all of you guys. And the responses that I got, I was overwhelmed with the kindness and the excitement that y'all had about this format. So on the heels of that, I went ahead and did another one for you. For those of you that are new, what is a reverse color along? A reverse color along is where instead of coloring the page start to finish with you and stepping you through every piece of my process, I'm presenting you with a completed page. And then I will give you a cheat sheet with the colors I used, um, the different combinations I used, the distress inks I used, and that will equip you with everything you need to complete this page like mine um, or inspire you to do it any way you want to. Um, okay, that said, I here is the cheat sheet for this page. And you can see I've got the colors I used, the combos I used, and the um, whatever I'm using for the background, if it's going to be distress inks or neo colors or whatever, I will put that on here as well. This will be the book and the page. And then another thing that I did different for y'all this week, I'm giving you colored pencil conversions for six brands of colored pencils. I'm sorry I could not do all the different brands. I know I'm missing a ton like Brut Funers and Crayolas and all of those happy things. And I'm so sorry. I just tried to randomly pick ones that I thought I've heard from people that they use. So for the Polychromos, Chromaflows, Artex, etc. Um, just so you know, wherever I have an asterisk, I just put here, it's my best guess. There wasn't a, um, if we go back here, and I put these in the order of this. So you can see like on the polychromos for the seashell pink, which by the way, I've learned does not have a very good color conversion across pencil sets. So you'll see that's the one that actually in every case I made my best guess. But I looked through my polychromos color charts and did my best to try to match it. So when you get to these little flagged pencils, um, it was just a guess. If you find something that you think fits better or something you'd prefer to use instead of what I suggested, then please do that. But I just wanted to let you understand that's what's going on there, especially for the Artex and Castle Arts. Um, for the Artex, I only have the set of 72. And for Castle Arts, I just have the set of 72. And by the way, these are the soft touch pencils. Um, but I didn't have the full set of 126. And so for Castle Arts and Artex, I maybe phoned a friend to get a little help there, but also reached out and looked at different color conversion charts that were online to just, again, make my best guess there. Okay, and then lastly, I'm excited to let y'all know, and this was at the suggestion of Marilyn Perez Martinez. So thank you, Marilyn, so very much for this wonderful idea. I created a coffee account and I'm going to have scans of these pages um, as free downloads. So they're completely free and I will leave the link for the coffee account in that page where you can download these um, in my description on this video. I will also, I've also included the a scan from the cheat sheet for last time. So I need to go back and add that link to that video, but just so you know, that's also there as well. So last time I just left the cheat sheet up for 30 seconds at the end of the video. So now instead of you doing a screenshot, you'll have a scan and these are PDFs that you can just download. They're eight and a half by 11. Um, so there you go. So with that, let's uh, start talking about the color palette. I'll be right back. Here's a color palette that I got off of Pinterest. And the credit goes to Francisca's Bridal. This is beautiful. I was in the mood to color some fall flowers for you guys and with you guys. And so I found this palette and I thought it was really pretty because it had a variety of light, um, medium, and dark tones on it. So you can see here, and I'm sorry if that's a little hard to see with the reflection, but here 
I pulled, uh, let's see, seashell pink. And then this is going to be celadon green. Then we have burnt ochre. And again, these are Prismacolor premieres. My very favorite Tuscan red. And then lastly, this is dark umber. So this color palette, by the way, will be one of the things that I've scanned for you on the coffee account. So don't worry about trying to take a screenshot here. And so you can see here, there are the five colors here, seashell pink, celadon green, burnt ochre, Tuscan red, dark umber. And as always, I added white, cream, and black. And then here are the color combos I created. So you can see for the um, orange color, rust colored flowers, this is the combo I used. For the reddish pinkish flowers, and I think these are peonies, um, here's the combo I used. For the leaves, to get this very silvery look, here is the combo I used. And then for the birds, the main body, the tail feathers, and oops, I forgot to label that, the main feathers here, um, you've got the dark umber and Tuscan red, and then the little bumblebee and how I colored him. And I think those are all the elements that you need. Um, okay, so with that, let me get my supplies and we will get started coloring the rust colored flowers. I'll be right back. Okay, let's get started. So you can see here, if we look at the architecture of how I colored this flower, you've got the seashell pink, then the um, burnt ochre, and then the Tuscan red down in here for the shadows. And I'm going to show you two different ways to color these flowers because you can see here, I've got more of a light, um, heavy flower colored versus here where I have more medium to darker tones. So let me come over here. We're going to take this flower. Let me zoom just a little bit for you. Let's get some stuff on my desk to the side. Okay, so we'll start with a how I colored most of the flowers. So with the seashell pink, and by the way, <laughs> I tend to do this a lot where I will beat up on the facing page just in the interest of art and trying to figure something out. And I've got a coloring student, Vanessa, that's like, oh my God, you're ruining that page. Why would you sacrifice that page? Keep that page and color it. So Vanessa, you always, I just adore you and thank you. Um, but I just, I don't know, I just do it. So it's just a Kim thing. Don't feel like y'all need to do that. Uh, okay, so here, now I'm bringing in the burnt ochre. And I'm just being kind of light and I'm overlapping it. And maybe I'll make like a little bit of an arch on the flower here. And then down here, Tuscan red. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm not worrying about, don't worry if you get Tuscan red down here because you're gonna go dark to light on those petals. So, and again, this one, this page is just for example only. I'm not gonna color this page, clearly. <laughs> okay, so now, and I might bring that up in a little bit of an arch too. Now I'm going to bring the burnt ochre back in, and I'm going to cover over that Tuscan red to really blend it. And I just love how these colors blend together, and I just think they're so pretty. Okay. Get my little okay and then lastly we'll come back in with the seashell pink and actually when i was color matching that color chart i believe i want to say it was the pink rose which weirdly matched the color palette the best for this particular one or this particular spot on the palette but when i started playing with the combos i decided to change it and pull in the seashell pink instead because, um, yeah, it just, I think it's got a more of a beige tone to it, which is what, what I really wanted for the flower. Okay, so there's one petal there. And I'll color the next petal, and we will make it a little more um, light, a little lighter. So you can see, and all you can do, so if you just take and play with these ranges, on how far you want to bring these colors up or down, that's going to add a lot of variety. And you can mix up your petals and do them all different ways, and it makes it a lot of fun and 
probably makes it feel a little more realistic because, you know, our, our petals and flowers aren't always uniform and how they are colored and if that even makes sense. Y'all know what I'm saying. Okay, then down here we'll bring in the Tuscan Red again. I'm just gonna do a little bit. And then finally we'll finish that off with the seashell pink. Now again, I tend to color in two layers, sometimes three. So I color very heavy. If you are a light colorist, first of all, I'm envious because I can't ever do that. I'm too impatient and um, I just go all in. But number two, feel use as many layers as you think you need to use. So you can see the difference where this has the um, burnt ochre coming way up and here it's sort of down a little bit. So you could do the same with the Tuscan Red. You can pull the Tuscan Red way up and maybe in the shadowed areas. And, let, and let's just do a Tuscan Red like that. Let's see what that might look like just for grins. So we'll put down the seashell pink, but I just wanted you to see the variety you can use to color these, these different petals. We won't spend too much time. This will be the last petal I'll do for the rust colored flower. Now let me get the Tuscan red. And this, by the way, as y'all know, if you've been watching me for a while, this is my favorite red. I have a crush on this red. If you have a pencil crush, do you have a pencil crush? What is it? What's your favorite pencil and pencil brand and color? What is it? Usually mine is the Prismacolor, and I think it still is, the Light Aqua, which I think is PC992. Aquas are always my favorites. Okay, so now we've taken that Tuscan Red. I'm going back in with the Burnt Ochre. Bringing that way up. Okay. So you can see already the difference between this petal and the one to the next of it where we just had the burnt ochre kind of about two thirds of the way up. And the this, this makes it feel a little more dramatic, but you can see the variation that offers your flower and how pretty that is. Now, one thing I do at the end of all of my flowers is I come in with a black pencil. I probably should have sharpened that a little bit better. Yep, I should have. Hang on. Okay. We're gonna add just a little bit of shadow. This is optional. I don't feel like you need to do this. Sometimes I go a little overboard with it, but you can see how just kind of blurring that in gives it a little more depth. You um, Also, if you look at my flower over here, I took the Tuscan Red to highlight these little contour detailed lines in the flower. So there you go. So that is the rust colored flower. So let me back that up just a little bit so you can see. So it's really easy, right? And, and also when it comes to, um, let's see, like the middle of a flower. Let me get this one in camera here. There we go. It's kind of hard when you get to all these little pieces in the middle like what color do I just do your best and mix it up so like if you've got little crevices make that the darkest part like it's a shadow so maybe you color your Tuscan red in here um, but on the tips you're just preserving that light seashell pink but just mix it up there's no rhyme or reason no right or wrong way to do that when you get to the center of the flower um, so I don't want you to be afraid of that okay let me uh I'll come back and we'll get started on the red flowers. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we have the red flower and how is that combo achieved? We achieved that with white, Tuscan red, and black. And if y'all remember the combo from last time to get that silvery color inside the bug, we had white, slate, gray, and black. This is gonna be the applied the same way where you use the slate gray on the entire combo and then you blend it with white to make it lighter at the top and then you add black to the bottom so that is the same way we are going to do a red flower 
So let's come back over here and let me grab, oh, let's see, this flower down here in the corner. Sorry, trying to make space on my desk. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do is take the Tuscan Red and let's start with this petal right here. <clears throat> I'm just coloring kind of light and I'm gonna color the entire petal in Tuscan Red. So because of that, this flower takes a little bit longer, but it's so pretty and worth the time. Okay, now I'm going to go a little heavier in like the center and down to the bottom. And then down at the bottom, I'll take my black pencil. We're gonna add the black for two reasons. Number one, the petal just has the darker sh shadow at the bottom. And then number two, there's a cast shadow from these petals. So it makes it extra fun to put this in here. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure I go over the black with the Tuscan Red so it doesn't look like a big black stripe at the bottom of the flower. I'm going to just keep um, coloring the Tuscan Red up to the top. And then I want to get the, I want to blend out this line just a little bit more. Then I'm going to take my white pencil and this is where the fun part is is really blending that Tuscan Red at the top down into the middle Tuscan Red that we did. The middle, you know what I mean, the more medium application of the Tuscan Red. And then that gives you your first petal. And isn't that pretty? So on all of my flowers, I did about that same ratio, about, uh, that's about a quarter of the way up. This is about two thirds of the way up and then just blended out the rest of the top. But you could mix it up and you can like um, bring the pink further down. Um, let's try this one. I like, I just really like that robust red on that petal. So that's why I think I did most of mine that way and didn't really mix it up like I did with the rest color flowers. So I think for this one, we'll just do two petals. Okay, so now I'm going to come back in Okay, now we're going to add the black at the bottom. And just add maybe a little bit more there. Okay. And you know, as always, if you guys have any questions on, hey, why did you do this this way? Or, hey, what's going on with this? Please don't hesitate to ask in the comments. I'm always glad to um, help out. If you're watching this video three months after I filmed it, please still ask me. I'm, I'm always checking my comments and glad to help. And you know, anyway, if I know the answer and I can help you, I will. If I don't know the answer, I will tell you I don't know the answer. Um, and be honest with you, but we'll, we'll try to figure it out together. Okay. So there you have two petals. So on this one for the contour lines, I use the black, but you know, don't feel like you have to do it exactly like me. If you wanted to, um, make yours a little different. I just look at color alongs kind of more as inspirations. Um, sometimes when I follow other people's color alongs, I will take, like if they use three colors, I might choose a different three, three colors, but I apply them the same way that the artist did and it kind of gives you fun variations. So I hope that this is just more of a platform for you to be inspired and do your own thing. But if you make it exactly like mine, that's totally cool too. Okay, so now we've got the red flowers. You know how to do that, right? So the next thing that we'll do, I'll show you how to color the leaves. So let me get those pencils and I'll be right back. For the leaves, um, and this was kind of accidental to be honest, I was able to achieve sort of a silvery look. That doesn't look as silvery as it did um, 
before I applied the Distress Ink background, but the um, it is really a pretty combo. So what we're dealing with here is cream, celadon green, and dark umber. So let me um, take some leaves on this facing page over here, and let's color some of those. Let's see. Yep, we'll color some of these right here. So the first thing that I'm doing is I'm starting out with the celadon green, and I'm just laying that down for most of the leaf. I'm just doing a light layer. And I'm coming most of the way up to the top, but not all the way, because that's where we're going to put down the cream pencil. I'll do the same thing on this side. So these leaves are so easy to do, and now it's after coloring them, it's like one of my favorite leaf combos, I think. So the next thing I do is I take the dark umber, and I'm gonna make like an L shape, or almost like a boomerang. Maybe think of it more like that, like a boomerang here. Or a V, upside down V, whatever you want it to be, or a letter N, I don't know. Be creative. Make it whatever shape you want it to be. But I just, you can see I'm just curving along the stem. Okay, so then after I do that, I'm going to go back over that and coloring over the dark umber with the celadon green, which really, you can see it already softens it compared to here. Just coloring over that. Let me get my little trusty little makeup brush thing. Okay. Do the same over here. Let's go over that dark umber. And now I'm burnishing in that celadon green, making it a lot darker. Get this a little more pigmented. Okay, then I'm just kind of softly coming up into this little uncolored space at the top. And now I'm going to take my cream and I'm going to color over and down over the celadon green a little bit. Not all the way down, but just far enough to sort of blend it in. And then the last thing that I did on these leaves was I took the dark umber and I just very gently colored it in on the very edges here. And that to me makes it feel a little more realistic when we look at how leaves are. Um, okay, so there's a leaf. And then the last thing I did there was I took the dark umber and just made that the center spine of the leaf. What is the word for that? The vein, the center vein. And then also the dark umber I used for the branches on the roses. Are these roses? I don't, they're kind of thorny. Maybe they are. I don't know. Whatever these are. And then sometimes I added, like if you see the these little thorns right here, the way I colored those on the other page is I took the dark umber. Let me make sure I'm still in camera. Yeah. Took the dark umber here. But then I took the celadon green and I went celadon green up into the thorn and then blended it out along that that ledge, or not ledge, you know what I mean. Um, and you can see that here, where I've got the, the green going over the brown a little bit. So you can be creative and do that a couple of different ways, but really that's all there is to the leaf. So we'll do one more together. So we could see it again. So we'll take the celadon green. And then we'll take the dark umber. And again, we're going to make sort of that L shape. Or whatever that is. That's really not an L at all. Bring that up here. Then we'll take the cream, bring that down, and then the last part we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of brown, or I say brown, the dark umber along the edges, just softly, and then we'll blend that in again there, and then lastly, take the dark umber up that main vein. Okay, there you go. What do you think? Easy peasy, right?
I've got, you've got this. I believe in you. You can do this. Okay, next, let's focus on the color combo for the birds. I'll be right back. So for the birds, um, I had to really think about how I wanted them to look. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I wanted to, um, oh, let's see. I, I just wanted to kind of do something where I thought they would blend into the environment a little bit more. And what I did here was we started out with the seashell pink right around the eyes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then I added burnt ochre, so I'm kind of going in a circle. And then you'll see dark umber and then Tuscan red. <clears throat> Excuse me. So there's not a bird on this facing page. So off camera, just real quick, I just kind of drew one. Looks more like a duck than a bird. The bird of, well, ducks are birds, but you know what I mean, the one on the other page. So what I did, and I don't hope this doesn't smear because I just used my black fine liner. So I just kind of took the seashell pink. Make sure that y'all can see that okay. Yeah. Took the seashell pink around here. And it is smearing just a little bit, so I hope you'll forgive me that. And then I took the burnt ochre and just went around. And we're going to overlap and blend these here in just a little bit. And I brought some of the burnt ochre down more along the neck. And then along the top of the head here. And then dark umber was next. And dark umber we're bringing in. Wow, I made this a giant bird. <laughs> Big bird. But you'll see what we're doing here in just a sec. And again, just bringing that. And I'm just really kind of blocking in where the color is going to be. And then lastly, we have the Tuscan red. Which is out here. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is start blending these colors together. So let me go ahead and color in, and I'm not going to do the Tuscan Red all the way down. Just want to get to the blendy parts so you can see those. So what I'm going to do is blend over and into that dark umber a little bit. And on this bird, I definitely took more than two layers to get everything in here the way I wanted it. Then I'll take the dark umber, and I'm bringing the dark umber back down over the Tuscan red. And that's good. we'll just keep blending that out. And then you'll have a nice smooth transition there. And again, this is where <laughs> I think of Vanessa going, what are you doing to your other page? So... Okay, so here we're doing that, and I'm going to bring the dark umber up into the burnt ochre a little bit. Start blending that out just a little bit. And then I'll bring the burnt ochre down over the dark umber. And like up here on the head, I think I maybe even colored the dark umber completely with the burnt ochre. As I look on the facing page, I think that's what I did. So the same thing, just sort of blocking in the color, starting to blend it a little bit. Let me get my makeup brush there. And then going in with the seashell pink again. And I'm just going to try to be careful around the eye to not pick up the fine liner I just used. Okay, so now with the seashell pink and the burnt ochre, I'm gonna try to soften up that line a little bit. So lightly bringing in the burnt ochre and then I'll take the seashell pink and really <clears throat> blend that out. Okay, and I'll take the burnt ochre So I was just trying to think of birds out in nature. You know, usually the mama bird is more camouflaged as she sits with her little baby birds. But I wanted her to 
be a little glamorous. I mean, don't we all need to sparkle and shine a little bit, right? So that's why I gave her the Tuscan Red, too. <clears throat> and I didn't really have any particular bird that I looked at on. Normally, you know me, I go to Pinterest and I look for reference pictures, and there wasn't a particular bird that I saw that had these markings, so I just kind of did my best with what I had. So the key is just to keep blending and blending and blending until you have the transition you're looking for. A nice smooth transition. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, nature's not perfect, right? Or maybe it's the imperfections in nature that are perfect. Think about that. <laughs> I just made that up, clearly. Okay, so you get the idea. But that's how the bird is achieved. And I believe I just used straight up dark umber on the beak. Oops, that's okay. Getting out of the lines there. We will just do that then. Okay, so there you go. So that is, um, that's not too bad, right? Pretty close? Yeah. All right, so next, um, while we're on the bird, let's look at the feathers. Oh, the bird has tail feathers. Okay, so the tail feathers, oh gosh, let's see. They look like this. Something like that, right? So on the tail feathers, we've got over here, let me see if you can see it. Uh, I cannot lift my book. Um, I'm going dark umber to burnt ochre to seashell pink. So it's kind of the same combo up here, but without the Tuscan red. So we will, and that is right here on this color combo. So let me come over here. And we'll just go. Let me see if I can move my light around a little bit there. Let's see if that helps. Dark Umber, and when I do stuff like this, I just cross the lines. I don't really worry about it too much. And this is another place where you can decide how far, or, you know, and you can do each tail feather um, differently, but how far you want the, the color to go up or down the, the feather itself as you color it. So then here's the seashell pink at the bottom, which is funny because it's not even really pink. But I guess it is if you look at it laid down against other colors. And then the dark umber at the top. But you can see how you can get that nice blend like we had above with the bird. Just blending and blending and having fun, right? Are we having fun? I hope you're having fun. If you're not having fun, put the pencils down and step away. Okay, so now I'm going to take black, and I'll just kind of, and again, I should have sharpened that, but just to kind of add that definition back to the tail feathers. But you can see here, it's the same thing, right? Yep, so there you go. Now, the last thing that we will do on the bird is we'll color these wing feathers, and so, Hey, look what I did. I drew some wing feathers for you. So those are going to be super easy. They are just Tuscan Red and Dark Umber, which I'm showing you here. And I just forgot to put down wing feathers. I'm sorry. I've already scanned the document, so I don't think I'll be able to fix that before it's on the digital download. But um, it's, it's real easy. So we'll just do Dark Umber here and then Tuscan Red at the bottom. Just blend it all out. And 
you can blend as little or as much as you like. You can choose to blend the Tuscan red over the dark umber if you want, or you can just blend it in the middle to preserve more of the actual dark umber. However you want to do it. I just want you to enjoy it. Whatever makes sense and looks best to you. I don't always expect y'all to agree with my color choices, my application of the color choices, but that's what makes it fun, I think, is that we all have different um, creative ideas and the ways that we want to apply those. Okay, so you've seen, I think, enough of that. Um, again, let me sh actually, let me show you one more thing you could do is you could take the Tuscan Red up higher and add just a little bit of the dark umber at the top. There you go. And then lastly, ha, I sharpened it this time. We'll take our black to go back over those feathers to preserve the line art and get that definition. Now you could do like a little shadow here along the wing if you wanted to. Um, okay, I think that is it for the birds. So we did the head, the wings, and then the tails. And then the baby birds, I just echoed the same, the same pattern and made them the same to keep it easy. Okay. Uh, one thing I realized is I did not include a combo for the nest. The nest is merely burnt ochre and dark umber. So let me see if I can draw a little bit of that over here, and I'll be right back. Okay, so on the nest, what we've got is I'm coloring the burnt ochre at the top of the shape and the dark umber at the bottom. So if we come over here, <laughs> this is like the contours of how the nest looks. We'll do the burnt ochre at the top. And then the dark umber at the bottom. Yep, making sure I didn't have my black pencil in my hand. And what I did is I brought the dark umber up most of the way and then just took the burnt ochre over the top and then blended that down. But you see how you can see how we get the nice highlight and low lights on the nest for the detail. Okay, there you go. You can do that, right? Easy, easy peasy. It's just the same thing. Burnt ochre and dark umber. And even on the nest, I didn't actually go back over the line art. I thought it was just fine, but that's a personal preference. So do whatever you feel like you need to do there. Um, okay, next we'll come back and we'll color one of the bees. Okay, so here's our little bee. And I feel like um, I probably could have done a lot more to make him pop out a little more, but I sort of like that he's hidden. Um, I realize here too, I'm so sorry on the cheat sheet, I forgot to put the um, the pencils. I'm so sorry, but you can kind of see burnt ochre, seashell pink cream. This is black and gray, um, or black and white making the gray. And I will what I will do for these missing combos, I'll just put them in the descriptions for you. Um, so you've got those. Okay, so on the B over here, what I did, let me zoom in, was I used, I started out with the, um, sorry, the eggshell pink up near the top and the cream down at the bottom, and then a very little bitty bit of the burnt ochre. <clears throat> like that. So you're still going to get like the yellow and black 
B. So we'll do the yellow here, add a little bit of the eggshell, and then maybe at the top we have a little bit of the burnt ochre. Just blend it. Okay, and then back here, yellow, eggshell, and just maybe a little whisper of the burnt ochre. All right, so that's the first part of the bee. That is so super easy. Now for the second part of the bee, we will need your black and white pencils. So what we're going to do is I'm going to color Oh, and I grabbed the dark umber. Whoops. That's okay. Black will cover that up. So we're going to color the darker black near the top. And it's going to get kind of lighter as we come down the stripe. And then we'll take the white and just blend that in and you get kind of that gray effect. Okay, so the B is super easy. I also took the black pencil and went over his eyes a little bit. Now for the wings, I went very light with the black pencil. And then I colored white all over it to make them gray. And then I finished off with a white Posca, I'm sorry, a white gel pen, not a Posca pen. Although I think the Posca pen probably would have laid down better. Sometimes these gel pens don't um, go down well over the wax of the Prismas and it's hard to draw over them. So don't worry that this might look too dark because you're going to lighten it up with the with the gel pen. And again I'm not being real neat all right, let's see if our gel pen will behave. So I'm going to come over the lines here and then just sort of, and this is the part that's hard to get that gel going. Sometimes it's just when it's going actually over the wax. So just do your best. And like I said, you, a Posca pen would probably work a lot better. This is kind of hit and miss today. Oh, I don't know if y'all can hear that loud car in my neighborhood. <laughs> okay, well you get the idea of what I'm trying to do here, but you could take your white um, marker, paint pen, Posca pen, gel pen of choice and apply it there to make the wings iridescent, but you get what we're doing. So there you go, so there's your bee. Okay, um, I will be back with a few closing comments, talking about the background and a couple of other finishing details. Okay, two things that I wanted to talk about in closing. The first thing is the flower buds. We didn't talk about those, but you can see they follow the same color combos and I just mixed them up all over the place. I think in theory, if this were probably one um, plant or shrub, you'd have everything the same color, but I liked mixing it up. So sometimes I had the rust color buds and over here, even though I don't have a red or pink flower, um, I put some of the buds over here just to mix it up and kind of balance the color across the page. So feel free to do that however you feel um, feels right to you. And then the last thing is I did use three Distress inks. Um, I used the Ranger Distress inks and I get the little mini ink pads because I don't do this enough to invest in the bigger, I think they're three by three ink pads, which can be expensive. Um, and I used old paper, pumice stone and ground espresso. 
And you can see the um, old paper and the ground espresso are very pigment pigmented, whereas the pumice stone was not. So again, I did this last and I just distress inked over everything. So I didn't mind, you know, if I was going over like by the leaves here, I used the old paper or the pumice stone. So this is definitely the old paper because it's the more yellowish color, but I wanted that kind of gave the page sort of an antique look. Um, so I went lighter kind of around the inside and around the leaves and then every now and then around the branches I went a little darker so you could see here this is the pumice stone because it has a more grayish undertone versus the ground espresso which is dark and there is my requisite dark splotch that I have on every page and then I tried to do a little dark around the edges like I always do but just mixing it up but mostly I wanted to make sure that when I did the distress ink at the end that I was careful not to lose the yellow or the cream tips on these leaves by just stamping. And that's the sacrifice when you do the background at the end, especially with distress ink where you have the round pad or the, you know, you can't be real, um, not like with uh, Neo colors where you can paint into these little details. You're just kind of stamping it and rubbing it all over the place. So that's why I just tried to go lighter and be a little more light-handed around those areas so I wouldn't lose that um, cream color because I think it's really the cream going into the celadon green that makes it silvery. So, okay, I think that's it. I think that's everything. You could always continue to add more embellishments to make it more magical with your Posca pen and other things, um, stickles, things like that, but I just stopped here. So, um, again, be sure to look for the um, coffee link. And again, these are free downloads, absolutely free. And um, I think that's it. So I will see you guys next time. If you liked this video, please like. And if you enjoy this content, maybe consider subscribing to my channel. And then that helps these videos get seen by other new people on YouTube. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.